guess one of my concerns as a college eight fan was when you think about future, futuristic warfare, the way warfare is going now is very automated, it's very distant, there's people sitting in bunkers in right Colorado doing things in, in Afghanistan. Uh, and I just wanted, you know, was there, is there a gameplay balancing issue there? But, you know, how much of the new weaponry is so powerful, it's kind of so automated. Right. You know, do you, you still need to keep that kind of first person shooter lighting someone up in your. In your uh, no, no, absolutely. I mean, and so, if you think about today how that tech is working, right? So, if you look at, uh, let's say, drones as an example, right? Before they were just eyes in the skies, right, for our troops. And now you can actually have them carry ordnance, right? So for us, it's really about the interaction and how you use these uh, technology in the environment versus the technology running the environment, right? So you're actually going to have, they're actually going to help work the battlefield for you, right? And so it really gives the, empowers the players to be able to you know, decide how they want to use that technology. You know, and as far as a balancing issue, uh, you know, just like there's improvements in, in all of the technology, I think uh, the team's worked very, very hard in making sure that it feels, you know, that visceral, it feels like they call it doom time, where you don't necessarily get a particular weapon, that you go, gosh, if I just get this weapon, you know, I can play the whole game this way, it's that powerful. So, you know, they've really done a great job of, of using that technology in situations that um, nothing feels necessarily out of balance, you know, you don't go, gosh, you know, this is definitely like a, a, a gun that everybody's going to want to use, or is overpowered and it makes it too easy. So again, it's really that balance and, and using um, and that storytelling and, and how that adventure unfolds, using the right equipment at the right time uh, where players will not you know, worry. I, I'm hoping players won't worry that or feel that that is something that they need to worry about. Increasingly, as we find it, and this is not unique to your peers around you, and this kind of, you're getting more and more realistic. The graphics are getting more and more amazing, more and more cinematic, much more care goes into environments as well as the guns and everything else. And just a, it's just that, that balance between when did entertainment start becoming a simulator and when does real become too real? Have you ever had to scale back and thought, we don't really want to be doing this in a, in a game? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, it's balance, right? And I think that's, that's really the important. I don't think um, you know we want necessarily. This is supposed to be entertainment, mm -hmm. right? And so I think the intent here is: uh, look, we uh, Call of Duty is a mature title, uh, and you know as as the gaming and audience has matured, uh, clearly you know they like Call of Duty. They like what that experience is. Uh, we're very very careful into making sure that uh, you know pushing the boundaries as far as we think is appropriate. You know, there's really no reason for us necessarily to you know, go down that route of the, as you mentioned, the simulation. That it's really not what we're about. We're really about, you know, um, you know, from a single player campaign, it's you, and you're you're going to have this entertainment. You're going to sit down for for hours and, and enjoy this title. Uh, if you're going to jump into the multiplayer, it's something that you're going to play with your buddies, your friends, and really, it's become you know a little bit more of a pop culture uh, type of an environment where. Um, you know, you just go in, you just, sit, just sit down and play before you know two or three hours from a multiplayer session. It's, oh my gosh, where'd the time go? No wonder I'm tired. Or you try to stand up and you can't because your leg's frozen. And you're like, so How long have I been? You know, look up and it's two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like, wow, it's been five hours. Um, no wonder I'm tired. I got to use the bathroom. Um, so, you know, for us, it's really about that entertainment value. And I think uh, that's where the balance comes to where, you know, we're, we're very mindful of, you know, the audience and, making sure that it's really that entertainment you know, quality to it that you know if you feel um, if you feel like you're you're going down that route I think you know we would definitely be that. So a part of the game I'm very intrigued by is the section in the eighties. Does the game start with that section and what kind of influences have been drawn? So for us, you know, I think, um, you know, without giving too much away, right, so obviously we, we have about one-third of the game is in the 80s, right, and then about two-thirds of it's going to be in the future. So I think in the, in the video you saw a couple of those levels. So it really it's about you know, setting up how uh, our villain uh, has really been a, sort of a casualty of the first Cold War uh, and introducing him back in the 80s. So we've actually had run-ins with him potentially. Uh, and you get an idea of who he is and what he's about and, and 
realize how uh, in his, his multiple story arcs of who he is and where he is, it's, it starts in the 80s and then it goes all the way to the 2025 time frame. So it's really, really setting up the story. There's a lot of action in those. I think there's some horses. Yeah. Um, so we have horses uh, in, in Call of Duty Black Ops 2. We actually yeah. motion capture some horses. So that was quite fun uh, as they were running around trying to trying to motion capture those uh, fine beasts. Uh, made for, for an interesting afternoon. Um, but really just part of the story arc is where you start telling the story. That's going to be a nice juxtaposition of, you know, if you think of the horse as a, you know, a symbol of historic warfare. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. Your, your mechs and everything goes exactly. out. It must be nice yeah. to play with. Well, again, right, uh, to the point of, you know, entertainment, right? So there's just a lot of stuff going on in the storyline. Uh, and, you know, we really think that the, the players, as it unfolds in front of them, there, there's going to be lots of aha moments up. Oh, okay. All right. I, I, I get it now. You know, in typical Treyarch fashion, we sort of weave this story, uh, not necessarily tell you everything, you know, up front. I think it's um, a journey that we believe most of our uh, audience is really love. How long did it take to reboot Los Angeles? In, in regards to what? In regards to the, the whole production process. So we've been under, you know, we've been developing now for a couple of years, working on on the title. Um, so it's just, you know, each level comes on at different times. You know, so um, you know, it's, it's been months uh, of labor to pull all these levels together in, in a production schedule. But uh, you know, we're like I said, I think you know the stuff that you saw it not only in the trailer uh, up front, but in the uh, demos as well. It's, it's coming together really nicely. Uh, and it looks great. So. I'm going to keep banging on about the 80s. Go ahead. Watch out the 80s. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll Do they have on. giant phones? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, yeah. See, they, technology's working for us. We started with the giant yeah. phones. <laughs> Will the, um, the 80s be reflected in the multiplayer or the zombies mode as well? So, we're really not talking about that stuff right now, but I will let you know that the multiplayer probably is in the future of the 2025 modes. Okay, cool. Uh, and then zombies, um, again, that's what we'll be talking about. Uh, there's, it, it has its own story arc, right? And so, uh, time frame is necessary. Okay, I need a little bit. So, as zombies seen within the studio, though, is it kind of its own sort of walled garden? Is it a team that's, that, that specifically works on the zombies? We have a team that's specifically separate? working on zombies. So, um, you know, like we talked about earlier, it started out sort of as this Easter egg, mm -hmm. uh, and then the fans of been wonderful for us. You know, they, they love zombies. They they can't wait for more zombies. They're following the Easter eggs we put in. They're following you know, the storyline. And so for us, this has really grown into creating its own team within the studio, predominantly focused just on zombies and bringing you know new features and things like that to the zombie. And it seems like multiplayer FPS is this year with uh, with Halo 4 coming along. It's going to be a big year for that. But what kind of ways are you looking to sort of innovate in the multiplayer space? Okay. Right, so uh, uh, let me answer it this way. It's not the way you're going to want me to answer it. <laughs> um, I think if you look at how disruptive, we call it disruptive um, design and, and disruptive the way we're looking at the single player campaign. So when you start to look at the storyline that we're throwing in, you start looking at the branching storyline, then you throw on top of that the Strike Force missions, right? Yeah. So we're really pulling that apart, you know, and you're really adding new things to the single player campaign. I assure you the multiplayer team is doing the same thing with multiplayer. So there's a lot of different things that they're working on right now uh, and really looking at, you know, how can we improve that? What can we pull it apart? How can we, you know, change uh, play styles? How can we change how people interact in the multiplayer? So all of that, you know, just like this other thing, we're all doing the same thing. So everybody, you know, all the different teams have been looking at it, you know, how can we, you know, pull it apart? What are some of the things that we can do to improve and make it better? Because that's such a difficult balance, and, and, and it's one that yeah, I don't think it's unique to you. Where there are individuals that will only ever play a single player campaign because they won't play online, and you right. know, pretty much only buy it to sit with their buddies and have a beer and let their legs run down. Right. Um, I mean, there has been critique in the past that that balance hasn't necessarily been right. So, how have you worked quite strongly with the fan base in the community to help make sure that balance is there so that the game feels that it has equal? Regardless yes. of which part Look, to and, and I would say yes, right? <laughs> because um, we've broken it up to where they have their individual teams, right? So we have a single player team. And 
just works on single player. We've got a multiplayer team that just works on multiplayer and zombies as well. So those teams are specifically focused on making sure that their areas of expertise is really where they're driving. So you know, the single player team, as a studio, we all want it to be great, right? But I think the individual teams are really so focused on what they're trying to deliver um, and, and really push where, where the game's going, what those ones are about that. You know, I think, again, internally we have so much pressure on ourselves, you know, to, to, to drive this franchise forward and drive those You have a very forward. vocal family. Yes, we do. Local yes, 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 we do. That knows what they like and what yes, they want and they exactly. can tell you if they're not happy. So. <laughs> we, and we have heard them. Yes. <laughs> When you look at the most played games on Xbox Live, it's absolutely incredible to see Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops still in, top, yes. in, in the top two, top three all the time. Is there a worry that your own games are kind of cannibalizing your own Xbox Live time spent? You know, I, don't, I don't know if that's something we consciously worry about, right? I mean, I think it's, um, to me, I think it's a, a testament to the games, right? That, you know, at any one time, you know, we find players will play MW3 and then, hey, this week we're going to play Black Ops. Hey, we're going to go back. To, so I think it's really great for us that you know our fans are able to you know, jump from game to game to game and stay in the universe and stay connected with their friends um, and you know continue to get enjoyment out of these titles. So uh, you know, I think it's a, it's a it's an it's an interesting situation you know to be in. Um, but we think you know again if, you know, the fact that they're playing Call of Duty and enjoying themselves, or you know as developers, they're you know not only from Treyarch but obviously you know, the other developers as well. Um, you know, it's great. Right? It's a testament to how good the games are, so no bad news. <laughs> <laughs>